there should be a way to get these girls shoes. I mean, it shouldn't be so hard to get a girl a pair of shoes, even a girl in Ethiopia. There's, there should be a way to do that. Enough people were interested enough, and um, so we came together. Uh, I was very moved by the story, um, and not only the fact that you know the girls needed the shoes so they could run, but also that it gave them a sense of power in their own lives. I do this because I think we often take for granted what we have in this country, and certainly the lifestyle we have here with all the problems we may have is nothing compared to what these girls have to struggle with in Ethiopia. And I think looking at their plight and realizing this is something very small that we can do, but could have such a huge impact on the lives of, of some very um, worthy young women is it's kind of hard to say no to. And I think it was Marie that called me up and she goes, you know, it's not girls, not girls gotta run. And we're like, yes, <laughs> that is exactly right. Girls gotta run. Rather than sort of throwing a bunch of stones into the ocean and hoping something lands. I feel like it's been a very targeted mission. I feel like we've um, helped spread an awareness about these young girls in Ethiopia. I've, I also feel that it's been really nice to sort of offer art, offer a chance of artists to, to come together in a unique setting. <laughs> a long tradition of shoe paintings and so forth and I thought shoe art to raise money for shoes had a poetic feel to it. a challenge, um, do something shoey or related to running and girls, um, it's always interesting to see what they come up with. But, you know, this woman over here does pear art, so, <laughs> so she's like, you know, the pears are there but so are the, sh the shoes, so they just, they are themselves and they do their thing, but, you know, tweak it to include the shoe art. And linking art and athletics with a social cause, with helping young women in Ethiopia uh, to continue their education and in some cases to be able to pursue an athletic career. That we're trying to get more and more Ethiopian artists involved. Well, I was born in Washington, D.C. and both my parents are Ethiopian. I wanted to describe a runner's high, kind of like a, a runner's zone, that, and I end up calling it runner's zone. I, instead of um, just concentrating on shoes, obviously she has no shoes, <laughs> I wanted to concentrate more so on um, what we'd be giving these young girls, and something so small as um, shoes. It can keep them in school, it can keep them um, involved in an activity that can benefit them. And I feel like um, there's a color scheme that a lot of uh, Ethiopian artists tend to choose from that's very warm. 
I think being around a lot of the artists from Ethiopia, um, my palette is brighter and my colors are more intense. Um, I think about the girls while I'm working. Contribution to this organization can truly make a difference. You know, $50 can buy a pair of shoes, I think, for a girl in Ethiopia. And it's not much for Marianne, but on her end, it's, it's huge. It's a lifestyle changer. <laughs> and we found three young women that were organized and had a team and they went out and got their shoes and they got one pair with spikes and one pair without. And at first you would think that, you know, getting shoes for girls should be something fairly easy, um, but it does require a lot of effort and a lot of creativity and a lot of legwork and a lot of commitment and dedication. If enough people care just enough, this does not seem impossible. This seems possible.